I'm, uh, I'm finally, it's the weather's broke and there's not enough, not too much wind for, to shoot a video. I want to show you, you will hear some cars, cars back on the road there, but I want to show you today some, some stuff about uh, spring management. I've been trying to get these videos out, but it's been extremely windy, too windy to have a microphone. And I have here a hive that uh, doesn't need to be inverted, and I'll show you why later. I checked them out yesterday. And, but the first thing is this first video on in, inverting hive bodies, which is a spring management technique that beekeepers use to, uh, to stop swarming. Uh, I, I use it for two different purposes. One is to stop uh, swarming, and the other is to uh, increase a hive strength faster, because that's really what it does. Um, if you look at, think about a three-dimensional view, this is uh, April 21st, 22nd, April 22nd. You know, you have brood in a, an egg-shaped fashion three-dimensionally. So here around the hive, and then, it, and then an egg-shaped this way in the hive. So the bees, everyone agrees that the queen's natural inclination is to move upwards. They're more reluctant to move sideways or down. So if they're up here, the queen is more reluctant to move down or from from on frames sideways or laterally. Uh, so for a natural hive, a natural hive instinct is to travel upwards, laying eggs. 21 days after that, they'll be a little higher. 21 days after that, a little higher. So uh, what beekeepers have basically come up with is that, it, that that's why a Langstroth hive is built vertical rather than a top bar hive that's built lateral is because the bee's natural inclination is to go upwards. So what can sometimes happen is the bees come up, especially if there's some honey at the top here and the brood is below that, they can't go up anymore and they're reluctant to go down. So what beekeepers will sometimes do is take this top box, put it on the bottom, put the bottom, put it on the top. They call it inverting, rotating, or reversing. I, I usually refer to it as inverting. but. Uh, the problem with that is, is that many beekeepers go through and they decide that all the hives need to be inverted every year, and that's just not the case. Another thing that's not true is that bees, yes, are reluctant to go downwards, but they do so. And they're reluctant to go across, and they do so. Top bar hives are proof of that. The theory behind inverting hive bodies is basically as swarm prevention, to either break up the brood nest or take the brood nest that's usually in the top and put it in the bottom. So if you have that three-dimensional picture, the brood nest can be up here, which will also be you know, here. It could extend the whole direct the whole way, or it could be down here. So if it's down on the bottom, of course you do you don't want to or need to invert any hive body. If it's, if it's just in the top, just up here, and you switch, it'll actually speed them up actually move up quicker because it's natural for the bees to move up as they make brood. If it's, and as is normally the case, if it's here, what ends up happening if you invert the hive bodies is that now you have a patch of brood here and a patch of brood here. So the, the brood nest has to separate. So some bees go to the top, some go to the bottom, and if it's too early in the year and the nights are still too cold, one of those sections is going to get chilled. Whichever section doesn't have the queen is going to get chilled. So once they come up to a barrier, that in this case is queen excluder, they're going to go back down. So I looked at them yesterday before I put these honey supers on. And it, the whole, both hive bodies are filled with brood. The queen was in the bottom and there were some brood in here that were on the change. So in other words, there is brood ha hatching out. It was a new cycle. Brood was hatching out of the center of the comb, but there was cat brood on the ends and the queen hadn't got up there again to lay into the uh, center of the comb. So had I inverted this, the queen would have been in the top and wouldn't have been able to go anywhere but down. In that case, you do often cause a swarm. If you invert high bodies, and you put the queen in the wrong spot. You need to, if you're gonna invert hive bodies, you need to make sure that there's empty comb up above the queen. 
where she can come up and lay. In this case, the queen was back down here, so she had been up here and laid, and then she was back down, laying down here. The whole bottom was was fully, you know, fully capped, brood of all stages, and I found the queen down there. <clears throat> the top was all capped, and a lot of it was hatched out, at least uh, closer to this side, probably somewhere in here. So I'm going to show you that frame, and I'm going to show you how to distinguish, you know, what's going on there. Hopefully, uh, on the other end of the yard, I have another hive that does need to be inverted. So I'll show you that real quick before I dig into any of these hives. Okay, this hive on the other hand, you know, they were a late swarm. You've seen them, I think I did my winter hive check uh, on this hive in the video. And they survive fine. There's about six frames of, of bees in the top. There's nothing much down below. They have two frames of foundation they never got to pull last year because they were such a late swarm. But they do have, you know, 18 other frames. So the bees are all up in the top here. There's really nothing down below. And they're just building up. So even if I were to leave them alone, it would be a, a long time before they ever swarmed, if they did at all, because they would move back down in here. What I'm gonna do is I want them to build faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give them this empty comb above the queen so that the queen just does her natural thing, which is always a time saver. So spring management, really what it is, is it's a, it's a, a balance act. It's, you're trying to get your bees to, war, to, to grow rapidly in time for the main honey flow, but not so rapidly that they swarm. Uh, it, so you're, it, it's kind of a give and take. Either if, if they're building up too rapidly, you need to slow them down. If they're building up not rapidly enough, you can speed them up, and this is one of the ways you can do it, is by inverting the hive body. So this, in this case, is not a swarm control procedure that I'm using. I actually rarely use it for swarm control. Uh, the only time I ever really use it for swarm control sometimes is for a honey-bound situation in which neither of these hives, are, hives are in. This one might be when I check them later. If so, I'll shoot another video. But in this case, we are going to invent or invert these two hive bodies. I'm going to take those two frames of foundation and I'm going to bring them back up and intersplice them in between, you know, what will be brood comb in the future. And then all the brood will be down in the bottom. So I'll get started on that. <clears throat> okay, we'll open them up and then I'll give you a little close up a little later. Again, this hive is, is pretty small. You can see they're up there. It's a little cool in the morning to be doing this, but the wind is supposed to pick up later on the afternoon. I wanted to uh, shoot the video while you could hear what I was saying. It's also getting pretty late in the spring, at least in my parts. I caught, I caught my first swarm yesterday, so um, they are out and swarming. I don't like to crush bees, so I always shake my inner covers off. Might be a little testy just because it's a little the sea guards coming at me already. I'm just using a light smoke. You don't want to puff smoke at them. Just want to use light smoke. And that's more smoke than I would normally use. My camera doesn't have real great depth of field either on that lens. Strange. It's a wide angle lens, but you can see here foundation started to get pulled, not yet pulled. And you can see all the bees. Let me show you a close up of that. So here's a close up of the hive. Uh, you can see they're all, you know, up here. I'll pull out a uh, frame of brood and show you, but you can see they're up here. And then uh, we'll invert them. It's already breezier than when I started. Let me pull one out here. When they're a little 
little test like this is good to move a little slow. It's not a guarantee you're not going to get stung, but. So there you can see, there's brand new bees even on that frame. You probably can't see from there. I'll try to get closer, but. There's a frame of brood. And you can see eggs right in the center. And that, those empty cells are actually full of eggs, which is good. So you know the queen was up here in the last three days. On this side, the eggs, there are some eggs that have hatched, so they're closer to three or four days old. So you would not likely find the queen on this frame. However, there's no need for me to go in and find the queen. I found her yesterday. Basically all I'm doing. You can see the bees flying at me. It's a little cool, like I say, it's about 50. ideal time to be working bees. But for right now I'm going to pull these two frames of foundation out because I want them up on the top and the only really reason I want them up on top is because that way I can monitor that they're pulling them. So I'm going to smoke them one more time. Smoke them one more time, right before I lift them up. And I'm going to rather quickly pull the other one off and put this back down. They're a little testy. It's because it's so cool. Did you get stung? No. Okay. Got you though. Yeah. <laughs> so again, I'm just pulling a couple frames off here. Put down in here. So that so that I can put the foundation down below, and you can see that there were bees down here, but not much. Right now, they're not strong enough for me to worry about where these frames are at. But as they come up into the upper high body later, which used to be the lower, then I can move the foundational frames around. One good way to keep your bee space is to always compress your frames together when you put them in here. They're inverted. We know they have plenty of room at the top now. One of the things you want to watch out for when you do invert is that you don't break the brood nest and have half of the top of the brood nest up here. So, and I can see by looking at them that there was no brood in here. Take a look. If the 
brood nest had extended down into this high body, it wouldn't have been a good idea to invert them. As you can see, that's all just some honey and syrup, some pollen. If you break up the brood nest, then what the bees are going to do is that they're, they're going to try to cover all the brood, which is going to separate the whole nest. Some of them will come up here to, to, to try to get the brood up here, and then the brood that you move down below, they're going to try to cover that too. And that's going to basically divide their forces. If you have a hard freeze, a late hard freeze, you could you know, kill the hive or at least part of it. That's it for this video. Okay, now back to this first hive, I want to show you just that one frame of brood that, that, that'll tell you that there's a brood cycle change. So I'm just going to pull these. These were just put on yesterday, but I'm just going to pull them off all as a unit and go down into the hive. It's good, especially when it's cold outside, to do this above the queen excluder because I was apt to come out and sting it. Now, speaking of swarm prevention, adding honey supers does prevent, in some cases, swarming. You can see there's bees above the queen excluder already. I put wet supers on yesterday, and that gets them moving through the excluders. When I took those two supers off, I could hear that there were bees in there. See how hard it was to get these bees off the excluder because it's cold outside. So they just drop right off. And again, if I were to invert these bees right now, especially right now, there would be a higher likelihood that that would cause them to swarm. So you don't want you, you want to take each hive as an individual hive and make sure you're not causing them to swarm by inverting hive bodies. To save them. You can also see there's lots of bees in this hive. Okay. I was, I knew kind of which hive, uh, which frame I was looking for, although this is like, there's three or four frames like this. What I'm going to do is show you a close-up. So, as I get closer, can you uh, hold the button halfway down? Okay, so you can see that there's capped brood in a circle, I'll try to get this, in a circle around a portion that there is no brood. So what's happened is these bees have hatched out, these are hatching out, the queen typically starts laying in the center of the frame and kind of spirals out, and so the eggs in the center of the spiral are going to be older than the eggs on the outside of the circle, and that's why you see this, this transformation. So I'll, I'll show you a close-up of inside the cells so you can see that there are no eggs in there. And once this frame is hatched out, which will happen in the next few days, that's going to be room for the queen to lay. Since we know the queen is in the bottom of the hive, her natural tendency is to come up and lay again in these frames. But she has gone down, you can see, because she laid this, and now she's down in the bottom hive body. Here's a quick shot of uh, just a close-up so you can see there are no eggs in there. Looks like the bees are preparing the cells to have eggs laid in them. That's what that bee is doing. She's cleaning it. Okay, so I'm all, all I'm going to do now is just put this back together. I already figured out what they needed yesterday, but I wanted to show you. Just yesterday it was too windy to show it. My camera doesn't have a uh, professional mic on it, although I'm working on getting that. But uh, again, those of hives, 
sure you compress the frames together. If you don't, what happens is they build propolis between them and eventually you have incorrect V space. So that's it. Thanks for watching. We're Honey Bee Honey again and this is just a preview on inverting high bodies. Thanks.